All right, in terms of cerebellar testing on the routine screening neurologic examinations, uh, there are two things that we do routinely. Now, of course, if someone has a cerebellar problem, they'll have other issues, like with walking, especially tandem walking will be difficult. Their speech is affected. They may have nystagmus. Um, and I won't demonstrate those, but I would like to show finger to nose and heel to shin testing. So first of all, ask the patient to hold up an index finger. And now let me have you touch your nose and then reach out and touch my finger. Now go back and forth, touch your nose and my finger. Touch your nose and my finger. So notice I'm giving him a moving target and I'm also, I have my finger at a point where he needs to fully extend, okay? So the reason for the moving the target is important because if someone has ataxia, go ahead and keep going back and forth, that's gonna be more difficult if you're giving them a moving target and also at the end point of extension, that's often when you'll see a little intention tremor if someone has uh, ataxia. And then we'll compare that with the other side, back and forth, uh -huh. keep going. And the patient often will laugh when you move your finger and you can just tell them, you know, gotta make it challenging for you. All right, so for the lower extremity, um, we'll have the patient take their heel and then if I could have you drag it up and down this shin on the other side. Excellent, same thing now with the other heel. Okay, good. Now some additional things that we can do to check for ataxia. Um, patients that have a cerebellar problem have difficulty with rapid alternating movement. So if I could just have you put your hands on your thighs like this, and so let me have you with this hand, go back and forth like this. Okay, and same thing now with the other hand. Excellent. And let me have you with this hand, tap these two fingers big and fast. That's hard to do if you've got ataxia. Same thing with the other hand. And then we can also ask the patient to tap their fingers like this. Excellent, and then on the other side. Okay, so we may not do that routinely unless we're finding that the patient you know, has some sort of ataxia um, on examination. Um, one additional thing we can do is to check for rebound. So hold your arms like this. And I'm going to ask you to push up with your hands. And now I'm going to let go. And so in ataxia, it's hard for the agonist and antagonist to contract normally when you let go. And what you'll see in these patients is when you let go, you'll get an excessive movement um, in that situation. 